Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hull and Marauders podcast. Thank you. Wow, he's still here after the, I had never, after the intro. <laughs> never have I been regaled with such an amazing <laughs> display of oratory fireworks. That was incredible. All right. We're still um it's I always great to thing. see great to see our guests' reactions to that. Um, <laughs> we're joined today by Kyle Katarn himself. Um Kyle, Kyle Katarn. Katarn. That's what he goes by. That's what he goes by <laughs> on yeah. YouTube. That's that's his Twitter, that's his everything um we even have our our frequent guest jack who we always have on um loves calcatarn so we always have this quick draw ready to go yeah always. so there we go nice um i love it but yeah jamie and That's matt what it looked how... like after a haircut <laughs> <laughs> jamie and matt how are you guys doing this week doing well right? yeah uh very tired slightly recuperated from packs almost 100 percent um but Penny, Arc Penny, Penny Arcade, Arcade Expo. Expo, for anybody who doesn't know what PAX stands for. Oh my god. Yeah. Sorry not to derail in the first few minutes, but um, no one calls it the Penny Arcade Expo. The they Penny call Arcade it PAX. Expo. Okay. PAX. Just, just, just in let case me, you didn't know, just let me. Anyway, welcome to the Holland and Marauders podcast, because I think we got so <laughs> derailed immediately. Like, we didn't even say, hey everybody, welcome to the Holland and Marauders podcast. <laughs> but yes, welcome back everyone. Uh, someone's pumped about PAX there. Jordan, hey! What's are you, PAX. Are you okay, about so the, PAX. You're referring to the Penny Arcade Expo. Right? I'm referring to the Penny yes. Arcade now we, now we Expo. Know, now we know. East. East. <laughs> East. So, yes, as, yes, as we already important. said, we're joined by Kyle Katarn, um, who we've never spoken to before. We've kind of communicated communicated on social media through Twitter and probably other things. I don't remember. Yeah, this if, is the first the first time. It's really nice to meet you guys. It's a, nice it's a pleasure to have you on. Yeah. It's a pleasure to, pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah, nice to be here. So to get to know you, we are getting to know you here, but you sort of told us before the show, but so where did the Cal Katarn thing come from? Like how, why do you go by Cal Katarn? Why is that your, your YouTube name? I saw you share something recently where like someone always searches Cal Katarn and like, I only find your stuff yeah. like, and it makes me mad. So like, how, how did that all it's, begin? It's becoming, it's becoming kind of a problem. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to address <laughs> it one of these days, but yeah, no. Hello there. I'm Kyle Katarn. It's a name that I've chosen and decided to go by for many years now, um, both because he's my favorite character, and at least I was playing a lot of Jedi Academy and Jedi Outcast at the time that I started my YouTube channel. Um, and, and kind of an ironic thing, I didn't have a beard then. And I didn't really look like Kyle Katarn at all. And I swear none of this is intentional. It just sort of, it just sort of coincidentally happened that I then like, oh, I kind of resemble this guy when I have a beard too. Well, that just kind of reinforced I should just keep going with this Name you invoke his name taken on its own, its yeah. own thing, and and yeah, it's gotten to the point now where people are complaining when they're looking up Kyle Katarn related things on YouTube and they just get my channel over and over again. So that's kind of it's kind of funny, and I'm sorry to that one guy if he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, I don't know why the first thing that popped in my head is like the Santa Claus movie, yeah, where, like he he accidentally kills Santa Claus then he like grows a beard he he so oh my God, he right? became Santa Claus you somehow You're became becoming Kyle, Kyle Katarn contractually obligated yeah, yeah. so that, yeah, that's my, how it it'll my Ford Fiesta down. is going to get replaced with a Raven's claw I'm going to go out and drive <laughs> <Yeah>. stuck there <laughs> that's great that's it's got it's going to happen right there so i see a lot of people very excited um that we're having you on we're, we're pumped to have you on um we're going to get to our community yeah it's it's going to be a good time we're going to get to our community question of the week here. And this came from our friend Scout. And it's kind of a tricky one this week. And I'm trying to think of what I should answer as I'm reading it. But favorite obscure Star Wars fact? Um, I got one. Begin... Ready? Oh, you're ready, Jamie? Okay. Oh, I'm ready wow, to go. Already. This, Holy this is, crap. This is my favorite obscure Star Wars fact. Okay. So um, on Batu, um, there is a radio station which you can hear when you are on Batu, and it is BSO 401.72. Um, that is the frequency for it, and you can hear it the best when you're in the bathrooms. 
sorry, the refreshers, just so you know. But there is like a full lore like behind the radio station I'm about to for 1.72. And I am obsessed with it. So um, that is my favorite obscure Star Wars fact. There's a radio station. That is fascinating. What is on the radio? Is it music or is it talking? So it's a combination of uh, music. It's a combination of like pod racing, like uh, broadcasting. It's, it's fantastic. There's a book. That sounds awesome. I don't think I have it up here, but there's like a book that is like the Explorer's Guide to Batu, and it's like that's where the most of the information like lies about this. Believe me, I ha- I consumed so much of it before we actually went to Batu for the first time. Um, so oh, dope. there's a Spotify album too. No, there is, but there isn't. So it's it's completely different than like DJ Rex and like what he's doing. It is literally uh, okay. gotcha. DJ gotcha. Rex has like his music and like does everything and like Oga's, but then like there is like literally a radio station you can hear in the bathroom <laughs> it's fantastic just totally. listen to some pod racing and whatever's going down yeah, it's great yeah that's my obscure star wars fact you're ready to go with i learned that. something i did not know that it's my favorite fact okay <laughs> and of course it's a radio related thing i gotta have that kind of information i like it um kyle katarn what is your favorite obscure star wars fact Ooh, so there's there's a, there's quite a few, but the one that immediately comes to mind, I hesitate to say because it's kind of dark. Um, so in the Legends novel Dark Saber by Kevin J. Anderson, the original architect for the Death Star was a man named Bevel Lemelisk. <laughs> and he's punished by the Emperor for the destruction of the first Death Star following A New Hope um, by trapping him in a cage where flesh-eating beetles pour in, and they basically eat him alive. In the moment upon his death, his full consciousness is transferred to a clone host body waiting in the cage next to it, and the entire process repeats. And this goes on 15 times. 15 and this times. is uh, <laughs> this was Palpatine's go-to favorite punishment in Legends, was to use flesh-eating beetles, which he had genetically engineered himself, to eat people alive in front of him in transparent cages in front of his throne. What a guy, huh? Uh, I yeah. think we're going to see that in the Bad Batch this season. I think. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, they that's, said they said the that Hemlock's next... ending right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next couple episodes get dark. I think we're I think we're in store for some flesh eating beetles. Ooh. Um, for sure. Yeah, the Kevin J. Anderson Star Wars novels are a wild ride, and there's a lot of stuff that gets snuck in there that, like, you read it once and maybe don't. This is that one always stuck with me. I was like, huh, <laughs> what a, what an image, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what a name. Just, uh, <laughs> um, Matt, you must have an obscure Star Wars thing ready to go. Oh, what you, I had, or, I had like one that deep. was like out of universe, and then one that was in universe. Um, in universe, from, yeah, like uh, like what Kyle said, you know, from a book or like from you know expanded media that maybe not a lot of people have talked about. I think we made a short about it once, but it's one of my favorite things. It always sticks with me, and it's from Dooku Jedi Lost, and it's when nice. Dooku Dooku is in the Senate chamber and he's fighting to keep this bill that allow that has the Republic provide uh, protections and an army for different corporations uh, out in the outer rim when they're trading uh, to fight against pirates and stuff. Uh, And he's fighting to keep the bill, but the Senate thinks it's too expensive and they decide to vote against it. They vote it down. Um, And that is kind of the creation of like the Trade Federation's droid army and all these other like independent corporation armies that start popping up before episode one on the same day as he loses the fight to keep, um, you know, the Republic supplying armies to corporations. He meets Palpatine. (laughs) He meets a young, you know, up and coming senator from Naboo named Palpatine. Uh, So it's like that one fateful day. If if Duke and he meets had him just during like, a professional low too, so he's like yeah. vulnerable and open. Exactly. If the dude just had like, like some it. food poisoning or something, the whole, <laughs> whole thing would have gone on, gone differently. And I, I think about that day in Star Wars history a lot. If um, it wasn't for the lobbyists, the yeah. Empire would have never rose to power. We there you go. Here That's true. There you go. That's true. <laughs> okay, I I have a couple. I mean, I wanted to think of one that was like behind the scenes, like a random behind the scenes fact. One that comes to mind is in Return of the Jedi. I don't know why this came to mind, but they used a sneaker in the background as one of the ships. Yes. And like you, you can't even really see it, but like they say it in the behind the scenes ILM thing. I'm like, oh, that's really funny. They, they, <laughs> why, why did they just use a shoe? I don't know. But yeah, um, I there's also a potato in the asteroid field in the Empire Strikes Back. Oh, that's yeah. right. 
They were like, because someone challenged him. They were like, "What you going to all this, all this effort? Like, a potato would be indistinguishable from these like carefully created handmade asteroids." So he proved it. He threw one in. I there was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were right. He, should, he didn't have he to do all that work. Them. He could have dumped a, a sack of potatoes on the table in front of he George, and George would have been he like, was "Oh." Paid by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Speaking of potatoes, um, this is kind of related. Uh, Brent cool. asked if I saw the new Ghostbusters movie, and yes, I did. Uh, I mentioned yeah. potatoes because there's a ghost in it that looks like a potato, and I loved him. Um, but yes, we saw um, Frozen Empire, and I loved it. Um, and we'll leave it at that because we're not talking about Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters mm. today. But I did see it, and I loved it. So uh, can it I actually time. piggyback off that to make an announcement that has never before been known? Well, um, so first of yeah. all, I have never seen a Ghostbuster movie. Any <gasps> um, but because of that, I'm planning to react to all of them for the first time on my non-Star Wars channel. Um, oh my gosh. So yeah, first you heard time, it here well, first. Have fun. First time oh Ghostbusters reactions going to be coming soon to Grizzly Wizards. You heard it here first. Wow. And Frozen cool. Empire, I guess, will be at the end of that list because they're they're in yeah. chronological order, right? All the movies. They are. Are. Yep. are. Are you just going to do a watch through of the movies? I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll do I'll do a reaction and then a review to them. Um, um, cool. But I will. Uh, yeah, I I, I kind of know what I'm in for because like you know they're part of pop culture. So yeah, there's yeah. so ghosts in really. Them. Uh, no so one's totally terrible. blind to them. Like I know, like <laughs> the theme song and stuff like that. But there's ghosts, you know who to call, and that's all that matters. So. Exactly. And there's a, there's a green slimy one or something. Like that. Slimer. No spoilers, yeah. but yeah. What? Come on, man. Well, now I might as well not even <laughs> gave away the movie. Know now we know. <laughs> now we know. Shucks. That's is it. there anything left? Like <laughs> no, that, that's there, that's the whole that's the whole of, of Ghostbusters lore. Slimer. No, that... Yeah, I'm uh I'm looking forward to getting that started. You just reminded me of that with Frozen Empire. Oh my gosh, cool. that's fantastic though. Have fun. Yeah, that's, Big announcement. That's a lot of fun. Huge announcement. With a with a final, uh, you're gonna live react to Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire in the theater with your phone out. You're just gonna be like, <laughs> "Whoa, yeah!" I'll bring some LED lights and a flashlight. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No one will uh, be bothered. Don't be one of those <laughs> <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> Matt, do you have any announcements while we're at it? No. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just gonna like pull something out of nowhere. Why would you pull sure. something? It's of, nothing. Uh, it's nothing. <laughs> it kind of seemed like there was like there was something, but there really wasn't. No. Um, okay. Well, Jamie, um, yeah. we can now talk about the Bad Batch, which is why we're here. We yeah. Talk about season three, episode nine, the Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah. Um, so um, I'd like to kick off with the, the definition of the word harbinger, not to do this like a report, but I feel like that's really important. So by definition, a harbinger is a person and or a thing that announces or signals the approach of something else. So Oxford the harbinger defines harbinger as. So the harbinger was actually the foghorn in the background. If you're listening, dude, Isn't what the hell sense? was up with that foghorn? <laughs> Who needs no. a foghorn in Star Wars? <laughs> I thought it was great. Um, but let's start from the beginning of the episode. So um New Disney Plus logo? <laughs> yeah, what, what's going on? Yeah, Plus yeah. Um, I'm Does a that big like... fan of teal as a color, so I, I dig it. that. I love Don't teal. like the new noise. I kind of like I the old noise better. I didn't I notice until the noise. And, like, I literally was, like, completely just, like, zoned out, and then I heard it slightly different, and it was... What was what was that? It was it was something. Um, but, yeah. Um, so this episode was a very cloudy, very foggy and murky Pabu. Um, yeah. So that's just, like, setting the tone for the future, and... I don't know. I'm just like a little bit like nervous, like off the bat because of this. We're See, not here to drag the overcast kind of drives home that nothing lasts. You know, even the sunny weather goes away eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been very it. tropical like Pabu. Now it's like uh, San Francisco or, or Seattle. It looks like a postcard, like it's supposed to <laughs> yeah. be inviting. And now it's like, okay, they've been here a while and they're seeing the other side of like, you know, an yeah. off day. It's mm. like literally like the vacation is like over and whatnot. It's like, yeah, mm, I'm not sure about this place. For too long and you're going to hit a, a, a torrential rainstorm that's going to get you sick on the last day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not speaking from experience. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, I think that's something that's uh, pretty cool in the beginning was Omega and Batcher are just like running around exploring and uh, Batcher gets all like antsy, like looking into the cave. And Omega like literally says to Batcher something like, Oh, we've already explored this cave. Like, where was their spelunking adventure? I want to know what they were doing before, just like <laughs> yes, there are plenty of times. Like they've been in there so much. I have a confession to make. When she she does not say cave, she says cavern. And yeah. when she says cavern, I heard Kevin and I was very confused for like a good minute because I didn't hear what she said. All I heard was Kevin. And I said, what? And I, so 
from then on, it was like I was just every time they were in the cave, I was like, it's Kevin, the cave, Kevin, the cavern. <laughs> that is that's that's your announcement. That's my <laughs> announcement. That you thought they said Kevin. That they thought, uh, I thought they said Kevin. Uh, Brent brought, brings up a good point here, though, that um, Lothal was beautiful when we first saw it. And, you know, obviously the Empire came there and made it look crappy. The Empire hasn't come to Pabu yet. And hopefully they don't. But I'm pretty sure we know that they probably do. Right. Um, well, what does a harbinger do? It warns about the coming, the next like thing the that's coming. Right True, <laughs> like the fog. <laughs> like um, uh, even before the cavern, um, I thought there was a really nice moment showing that uh, Wrecker and Crosshair are becoming like familiar with the locals, like they know each other by name now, and yeah, like, relationships are being made on the planet, which means yeah. stakes are going to be higher. And like, you know, when the other sh when the other shoe drops, it's going to be rough. Yeah, I, I love that as well, because it's like, even though like Crosshair clearly doesn't want anything to do with anyone else still, um, he's still like doing it and like helping out others. Um, and I, I just love to like see that like continue on. Mm. Why does he have to be so like, I mean, I know it's the way he is, but why does he have to be so difficult? Like, why it's can't it, he is. someone thanked him and he was like, Ugh. what like, have you ever have you ever like worked retail? <laughs> yes have you ever had like a really like an extra terrible shift like that so that that, that mental state you're in for the first five minutes after you get off that shift that's crosshair's whole life that's just, that's a that's a and that's why he interacts with people the way he is because he's only seen the worst of people rough that's right. both sides you know that's a good way to put it that's the best way someone's put it so far so he's he's that's he true. never had a childhood he never had a chance to calibrate emotionally in any sort of a way and all he's known is killing and everyone he comes at every interaction with like this antagonistic, like everyone's a potential enemy until he knows who they are. Yeah. That's like a hard uh, thing to turn off. guilty nope. until proven innocent or something for him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's suspicious yeah. of everyone around him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he might not um, be, might have a reason to be being suspicious. Yeah, he, has, he has his reasons. And, and Jamie, I don't know. I don't know where you're, where you're going. going next, but I know one thing we just saw in our, our rewatch is the small the details in this show are just so good and the one we noticed this episode was hunter and wrecker stand so close to each other yeah and crosshair is always like a little bit farther away from it's them pretty far away and that there's like that, that could be because he's, he's just standoffish sniper. yeah the sniper is always more isolated maybe he's more standoffish or maybe there's also like that room that tech isn't there yeah so and that, that could oh. be it too yeah, i we think have a lot to unpack a little with bit of all of that yeah you could feel the absence the negative space like there's someone missing that's supposed to be in this dynamic yeah but also there's some truth to that like his training is so deep like he's like i, I gotta stay out of melee range at all times always be ready yeah. for ranged attacks no matter what could be yeah. why he like, feels isolated and you know separated so much is because and yeah he's, he's not like buddy buddy with them yet again that too no he, he was a lot better in this <laughs> episode especially like with like hunter but like we'll like get into that but uh to not i didn't want to bring that up so soon but he does there's a a good amount of times in this episode where he is like standing farther back from everyone else. But I mean, if we think back to the Clone Wars arc and season seven, like he does, he's always done that. He's just like stood behind everyone, just like really far away. Like think of like uh, the the shots in season one, episode one. Not to reference this specifically, but I they go to. All the time. I think about it all the time. I know you um, actually do. <laughs> uh, they're they're talking to like Master Balaba, and um, it's the four of them at the time. So. Hunter, Wrecker, Echo, Eon, Tech, and then Crosshair is just like back there, which is like that's like always like how it was. He's always just like chilling behind all of them. Um, but watch. like, it's just what he does. He just watches and observes. But I feel like like in like these like new episodes, it is like also slightly more intentional where he does not feel comfortable coming that close, and like he knows that there should be one more, even though it's yeah. ironic too because that yeah. was originally his role, and now it kind of shows his distance from. Yeah, the dynamic that he originally belonged to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a double entendre. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like this show is it's very well written. It's just, it is just a bit. Well just Layers in Star Wars. <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy, dude. Never. Um. So I, I guess my my last other thing from earlier is trust the dog. Always trust the dog. There's always something going on. Oh, like Badger goodness. sniffed her out immediately. She knew something was going on, and then she was terrified. Yeah. <laughs> Chad brings up a good point. Listen I love I love the dog. lassie energy when she went to go grab Dude. go grab uh, the rest of the gang when <laughs> just oh my god fell down the well what do you mean well. Come quick. <laughs> who did we talk to a couple of weeks ago what 
who was it? What, one of our guests, we were literally making that joke. Like Batcher was the lassie of the group. Was it Chad or Batchy. Alex and Molly? I don't know. Might've been. I think maybe it was, maybe it was you. I don't know. Wasn't, I'm wasn't not you. Against. I'm always here. <laughs> my, my most standout was I was trying to figure out what kind of texture Batcher is. Like, is she more of a seal or is she like smoother than that? She's smooth. Like no, a I, I think, I think kind of, kind of blubbery <laughs> texture, like a seal, I think is the right. Really? Okay. okay. I, I yeah. see her as like, like it's weird. what does a dry arm? seal feel like? I don't know. But like, you know how like you've seen like, like pictures of like, like against the grain, it like, like sticks up thing. funny. A pit bull. Like, vel- anyway. like velvety short hair, <laughs> but it's, it's covered in like, like wax or like something to like, you know, okay. streamline <laughs> that gross. It's it's not, it's not like super waxy, but it's just like a little. Also, can we appreciate waxy. that that Batcher is just like crosshairs dog now? Yes. Oh, yeah. So, like he's just like, crosshair petting her more than anyone else. And it's, it's not even necessarily conscious on his part. She just chose him. <laughs> this is like he, when, uh, like, when your dad doesn't want a dog and then you get the dog. And exactly. then the dog gravitates exactly. to the dad. That's it's crossed literally that. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we oh. have a oh, Omega fell into the cavern. Omega yep. fell into Kevin. Into um, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, and they they come back. Yeah, it's Ventress. Yeah, and so I know that she was in the trailer, but she was fallen. it? She like sort entered of a, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. She was it in. any sort of a surprise to you guys, like actually seeing no. her show up in this episode? Or no. I really resent that it was not. You know, yeah. I feel like oh. she she didn't need to be in that trailer. I was already going to watch it, and I feel like a little bit of a little bit of surprise was stolen from me because of decisions the marketing team made. Like I would have loved to have not known that ahead of time. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I knew it going in pretty much that this would I be. Agree. I agree for the most part, but I'm actually kind of glad because my stupid nerd brain uh continuity wise would have been screaming the whole episode i would have been literally like she's supposed to be dead she's supposed to be dead like in my brain you needed a moment to do your prep yeah <laughs> so what i need like granny granny Grand inquisitor what? getting stabbed that time it, it would've... literally would have been exa- dude when we were at celebration and the grand inquisitor got stabbed in the stomach and literally the four of us five <laughs> of us were gathered at the tv going oh, we could have survived uh, the stab doesn't look too bad like oh you know we were going back to the trailer like oh maybe there's more scenes with him that we haven't seen yet like i don't think he's dead uh, he's got four like, stomachs bro he's like a cow it's yeah like, exactly. that was just literally literally. every theory <laughs> literally like my brain would have been focusing on that and i know it's bad and i know that's stupid but it would have been well uh, so I'm, i am kind of glad that man. so like, matt since you bring that up, I'll also bring up this statement that they literally posted the day the trailer yeah. came out, uh, which was, we don't want to spoil anything, but we want fans to know any new storytelling adventures <laughs> will align with the events of Star Wars Dark Disciple. Brad Rao, the executive producer. That was posted on January 22nd of this year. Yeah. When the well, trailer exactly came out. It. Because everyone was like, oh my God, what happened in Dark Disciple? They're leaving it alone. I want that to be said. Yeah. Dark Disciple yeah. is being left alone. I know. Spoilers for the end of that book. She dies, gets put into no, a bath of Night Sister like magic, and that's it. What do Night Sisters do? They're what, magic. Uh, what is that bath what? stuff called? It's called the Water of Life. Yeah. yeah. So like. <laughs> I, anyway. Um, she just wakes up. That's a rough time waking up at the bottom of a lake. You put her in a big gooey pod, and then it turns on with a bright light, and then the scene cuts to something else. That's not a definitive. Okay, nothing ever came of that. Like. Come exactly. on. So not, when Night Sister Magic starts gr- glowing green, like you know, not, things don't stay dead. That's not how exactly not how it is. When she uses the f- uh, force on the fish, the fish are glowing green. They Coincidence? Were. I, I think, think that they were bioluminescent fish because when the monster comes up, he's got that same bioluminescence he's, dripping he's out. He's got a bunch of, his, of like green slop on his beak. Like yeah, he just like ate food. everybody. Um, he ate all the fish. Down. I was going to mention that later, too, but I, I wanted to put the Ventures thing to bed immediately. Mm. In which... well, there's nothing to put to Matt... bed. Everybody knows that they, they've they released statements saying, like, guys, relax. Like Dark Referring Disciples to it as a retcon is incorrect. Untouched. Exactly. No, right. It's like, not a retcon. Anyway. It's a continuation. Let's move on. Yes. Um, exactly. Consider yourself, consider yourself warned. The Empire will hunt you down. <laughs> mm. Um, I um, think I think we'll get uh, uh, an expanded explanation for that in the next season of Tales of the Jedi. That's where I, I agree. I, I get that's out. what it, that's we can talk about that later, of course. Yeah. At the end, it but like, like I, I think they're that's... setting up for something, you know. And so I look forward. Backdoor to it. pilot. 
Mm. And that's been thrown around a lot. Why is yeah. that term said? Suddenly, everyone realized that's actually a term, like literally this week. And it's like, come on, just what's a front just... door pilot? The last uh, time back when pilot was being pilot. thrown around, I think was um, Boba Fett's reemergence in season two of Mando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone exactly. was like, "Oh, the back door pilot for 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 Book of Boba Fett." Of course, the Book of Asajj. The Book of Asajj. I'd watch. Lord. I'd watch it after this episode. Yeah. This episode, episode two, like Din Djarin so shows up. He's Ooh. five years old. <laughs> That'd be great. And then, oh, and then he's hell. her. He's her uh, Grogu. So then she she carries him around in a sack and is like, you I see some baby. kid, and he could be anyone, but you hear that fucking slide whistle, and you know it's him. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Um, perfect. Perfect. Anyway, so uh, Ventress and the boys are immediately like really standoffers with e with each other, right? Oh, so yeah. uh Big time. and Big then sense. she immediately just gets to the point of like fennec sent me and i have the information but you need to tell me why you want it and i love how omega tries to like beat her on the bush and saying our friend needs to know about m count it's just like great girl, job great omega omega. Five great seconds. <laughs> yeah literally like and then as soon she has as she's no done, poker face poor omega yep. she immediately drops it yeah <laughs> she, she tried but um yeah, and then like uh, Asajj like goes on to say how uh, she just she, I love how she just gives them the information up front because like that was what her task was uh, in which she ends up saying she believes or the M count is believed to be more capable of wielding the force and your blood doesn't make you force sensitive but you would need training to do so. Um, so I mean like emotion from Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah. so mm. like I don't want to like open up the can of worms of the argument of inherent ability versus anyone can be trained but that's essentially like where we're at at this point in time where like some people obviously would be more inclined to ha like wield the force like they would like know like from birth and others of just like anyone could be trained based on whatever because venture straight up says everyone has it like in them just at varying different levels and yeah. i'm just you guys know how I feel about it. I don't know that talented just... individuals in the galaxy are using some degree of the force every time they do something talented. Yeah. Yeah. That's always Han been... Solo's piling ability is because of his innate force sensitivity, which is lower on the scale than Luke Skywalker, but higher than, say, a gonk droid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not all gonk And even, droids. like, young, young Anakin, obviously his M count was off the charts, uh, just being a good pilot in general as a little kid, and being a good pod racer. Um, I heard a theory once that one of the reasons why his M count as a child was so high was because the force exists outside of time and they were reading both him and his son. Whoa. It was him and Luke's M counts combined was the reason why it was so high off the huh. chart. Jeez Louise. Which doesn't really make sense when, when I think about it, but he was, he was telling me that it's because like, if you think about the world between worlds and the way that it works, it's outside of time and space the force could manifest in that way and like sort of like before it's even happened it's already happened in the force you know i kind of like that in a way but way too much information it's a lot to think just, about i just think anakin <laughs> is, is born force jacked i think that's just how it is it's like is the chosen one the bloodline you know <laughs> um it's a good question that kind of seems to be the case because it was of course virgins in the first place they were like he was created out of yeah well anyway that's that's <laughs> great we don't talk about that um <laughs> Where is I also I another good Brent comment here. Uh he was very excited to hear the word midichlorians. Uh, yes. Yep. Which is I mean, yeah, it's great. But like if you rewind 25 years ago, people oh, would be like, people no one likes hearing midichlorians. What are you talking they, they about? They flitted around it so much, and then up to this moment, they were like, Okay, fine. I think people are ready for it. We'll say yeah. midichlorians. Do you think like, anyone they, out they there was the like count a couple episodes back and sort of like hid behind the bush and were like, What are they gonna do? <laughs> what yeah, are the fans well, gonna do? That's what they've been doing since season two of Mando, you know, when they yeah. drop the M count and everybody's like, M count, M count. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's good to know, like, they actually know the word midichlorian. It's nice. Chad is asking, where is Gonky? Is he okay? And I have to tell him, I have to reassure him real quick. He's right here. Oh, He's fine. God. Oh, good. He's doing, good. He's fine. good. <laughs> He's just taking he a little break. A breather on this episode. He wanted to hey. rest for a while. Hanging around with Kyle Katarn. <laughs> which is a um, great fan fiction he's gonna come back beskar plated it's gonna be great <laughs> that sounds I like do a... that in my in my uh tabletop star wars game that we play my sidekick is a gonk droid and i kitted him out with beskar so i like in gunfights i use him as rolling cover and I, he just waddles through the shootout and i just like crouch behind him picking people off that is we amazing we have to get you Incredible. on i was just I was, I was i was thinking <laughs> the same thing matt 
<laughs> our creator uh, character creator game whatever we we do a bunch of them uh they're always used to, to just like flex your creative muscles but pretty much we make a character for an rpg without doing the rpg <laughs> Sounds I love it. I love it. exactly up our alley yeah yeah um, we have a whole like encyclopedia of them so far but oh that's great <laughs> well just a little, yeah just a little bit uh all right so um yeah, that's I'll get right out a, there. That's and a backdoor say it. pilot for when we do that with Kyle. So, <laughs> yeah. <keep going> <laughs> uh, people who listen to like our podcast know that I am super against Omega becoming a Jedi um, for the sole reason of I just want her to be normal. Hmm. Um, I, I want a main, main character who isn't a Jedi. And I think that like for the way that it's moving right now, is I think that she eventually will have some sort of control not control over the force but just be more like reassurance like of herself and just like knowledge of it but i don't i don't think that she's ever going to become like a jedi yeah i think this was kind yeah, of the point. like i don't think we'll you guys want to see her get trained favorite. yeah i don't think so i don't think really I think she has a force aptitude and her it she's like she has an enhancement just like the rest of the batch obviously and i think that what hers is is her ability to learn you know, yeah, exactly. For other people, and I think that can be a force power. You can make an argument that it's because of her force sensitivity. She's so good at, you know, learning from everything around her. Right. So yep. you get. So you three think that she will not become like a force user. I no, think I she I won't think... become a Jedi. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. different okay, okay, okay. than becoming a force sensitive. You think she's gonna user. gain like the, the the rudimentary like push and pull at some point in her? I, arc? Think, I think possibly she develop in that direction. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, I always think back to think of the example of uh, Chirrut in Rogue One. Yeah. Sure. He's definitely not a Jedi, but he definitely is connected to the Force. And I think that that's something that, like, I could see Omega finding, like, another, like, um, plane of existence kind of, like, feeling. Um, <laughs> I could definitely, like, see her doing that of, like, opening her mind to just, like, accept the Force more and just, like, use that as a resource because, yeah, yeah sure, really like, she has... It. Yeah, her training has been soldiering, and that's it. And so, like, she's not necessarily close-minded to it, but she is. She just doesn't know. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's something really profound about she's a young girl in her childhood being raised by a bunch of dudes who literally never had a childhood. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, 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 it's not just that they lack the tools to give her what she needs. They can't even relate to what it is that she's experiencing and or needs. So... Teaching her to be a soldier is great, but that's all she's experienced, and she doesn't know anything else. And yeah. now we and have that's... like another layer of like unrelatability. They have, you know, they they fought and, alongside and you. They have that, no idea. Know? Yeah, no, exactly. It, and this in, this episode was interesting in that it feels like it marks one of the first times that they're kind of shown and viewed as obstacles to her, holding her back from certain things, as opposed to like they've always been her greatest assets. Like if yeah. it wasn't yeah. for the batch, blah, blah, blah. And now it's like, well, she needs to realize her own potential as an individual. And maybe they are now they're roadblocks in the way. And it's that dynamic is shifting. And if this wasn't the final season, I would speculate that the, 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 the next season should go off on her own. And it would be the adventures of Omega doing stuff. And the batch yeah. wouldn't really be central anymore. So yeah. that's super interesting show? that you like mentioned it now, because I don't want to jump to my comments about the music, but I'm going to now. <laughs> um, so there's like a, a really good moment in this episode where it's the three of them, Crosshair, Wrecker and Hunter fighting together and the Bad Batch, like theme music, like swells really loudly. And then the next thing you see, it fades into Omega's theme. And so I think that that the exactly the only time that we hear um, the Bad Batch theme music is when they're all fighting together as a unit. So the fact that they like decided to do the three of them fighting together and play the theme music and then have Omega doing her own thing. That's huge. That's, yeah. that's a lot bigger than we think it is. <laughs> like that is a lot bigger than we think it is. And you know, when you, when you talk about like the Jedi, not, not people always use that in a very negative light when they say they take children. Um, but it really, it's more like the parents giving up the children to the Jedi they take children um, in a fun way, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is the first time I think we've ever really gotten a perspective where it's like, holy crap, I don't want I don't want Omega to become a Jedi. I want her to stay with the batch. I love the batch. I love her parents. I don't want her parents to give her up. Um it took 3 seasons of like build up for that moment for me to I mean, let me just tell you right now. This was my favorite episode of Bad Batch of all time. Uh, which is extremely predictable if you know me. I am a Jedi person. I love training sequences and training Any, sequences uh, on Pabu were just TLJ vibes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the island and the, the balancing. Absolutely. 
Oh yeah. Big, big time. You know, um, with the first test with the balancing with the fruit on her head, at first I thought she was messing with her. And she was gonna give her like three three BS tests and then one that was actually like science, like she just like tester blood at the end of it all. Well, she yeah. did give her she did give her the BS test. Uh, you know, like sending to her to, that, to grab the flower was kind of just whatever it is that she's like way. To in the galaxy. She's still like flying by the seat of her pants, and she's pretty broke right now. And the fact that she kept catching the fruit on Omega's head, like she was not about to let it touch the ground. And I think the reason is not just she was flexing like her reflexes. That was her lunch. Like that was, that was the only food she's got. She's like, I got, I'm eating that thing later. Don't let yeah. it touch the floor. I like that. <laughs> Doesn't it end up hitting later or no? No, no it, she never does. Like it never does. It Every time. Yeah. yeah. She was flexing though. Just not even, even looking. Just Even when like the guys are just like watching the entire time. Like, <laughs> like, I love this entire episode is some combination of the guys just like watching of what's going on. Um, and Ventress just like knows immediately. Yeah, and it, it, she doesn't like falter like at all. Like, oh my those, god, <laughs> those are like my favorite moments. Okay, the binoculars. Yeah. So first of all, first of all, we have the three like dopes like sitting back up at like some like overlooks. Crosser looking through his rifle, and the other two each like with their own like binoculars, and just <laughs> just like the look and ventures, so the, the gasp, the gasp that Wrecker makes it is like that might be like my favorite like Dee Bradley Baker like noise in a very You're long calling. time. Cause like it it was perfect. It was it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic for sure. There have been, there have been some really good vocal performances. I I was yeah. really impressed with uh, the previous episode, the praying mantis guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the, talk about Pete character design. Like oh my god, big old bug guy. Design. Pete's peak sound. Yeah, when she oh. when she turned her head and just glared down the binoculars, that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, just the, the big pulse noise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! And then just Crosshair using his sniper rifle as a, as as binoculars yeah. is just mm -hmm. amazing. Of course, very on brand. Very Dwight Schrute. Yeah, um. I I made that little meme earlier on Twitter. So. <laughs> Safety on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, can I just say, AJ? I know how you made that meme. I love how there's already a ship name for Ventress and Crosshair. Do you know what oh, it is? I do. Do you want me to say it? Oh, do you want to say it? I don't think Matt knows what it is. I Ass don't. hair. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. It is. Oh my god, I joked about that in my reaction. There you go. <laughs> it's our, it's flowing around already. One. Like half like the unserious, thing? but also because it's you so silly. It. That's the name. Ass so. hair. <laughs> I can't. Uh, um, about that. Or like what 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 would, what's the alternative? Cross trust? <laughs> yeah. Corsage. 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 Corsage is not bad. Corsage isn't bad, but Anyway, um, we, we got bad. way too far ahead. <laughs> Matt is so red right now. It's the funniest thing ever. Oh my god, it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Jesus, well, let's, let's bring wow. it back in. So, so uh, I was actually going to talk about the training sequence with the rocks, and this yes. was actually targeted to Matt. Um, <laughs> Matt, yep. what would you I'm like to? Matt. What, yeah, you're being targeted about this. What would you like to say regarding the whole training sequence on the rocks in The Last Jedi and all that jazz? Training Jedi training sequences in front of a setting sun or like a, just a, on a little little nice little cozy island. Uh, that's it. You know, that's that's what I live for. That's all I'm here for. Um, and I, I really I could not get enough of it. It's kind of funny that, you know, obviously Jedi training is all about like balance it would seem like everybody at one point has to like do some kind of weird thing i mean omegas was kind of easy you just stand on one leg i can do that have you ever stood on like a remember when we went out to see that lighthouse and how slippery, Ooh, slippery that's those true. rocks were that's true yeah, but could you ride all the way up a mountain on a pit bull mm, be tricky. probably not probably not also, had to be a, had to be a batcher technically passed that test so does this mean batcher has a high m count too maybe probably. oh yeah huh batcher i have a on that rock you know that much I think I think with the Force and Omega, this is kind of our Sabine Cup episode. <laughs> like, I think we're getting the tea. Like, it always kind of comes through in Star Wars. Like, we get a tease with it. And we all kind of knew Sabine was going to use the Force by the end of Ahsoka season one. And I think, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see Omega full on, like, use the Force, push someone over, pull someone, whatever, hold someone in the air. I don't know. Force but high five. The Force high five. That's what we're, that's, that's what we're going to see. Um, but with... With Batcher, now that we're talking about Batcher, do you think back in the beginning of this season, Batcher being calm around Omega, do you think that was kind of her accidentally using the Force to calm Batcher down? I know, like, 
I know she was giving her food and like treating her well, but do you remember the you part know. where she was like settled down and like holding her hand out a little bit? Maybe that's yeah. looking too far I mean, into it. No, See, that's why that's why the lines that. are really blurry when it comes to does the force take credit for everyone's abilities because animal husbandry is a skill, right? That, that, you know, like you can know how to calm down an animal without the force. Like it's not necessarily like a direct one to one. Oh, this guy's force sensitive because he's good with X Y Z. So like it's it's hard for me to navigate that notion because I'm like I don't want to like take the credit away from the people who are skilled like the, the characters who are talented at these things you know they're not necessarily all of that credit goes to the force I think it just goes to her innate ability to pick she probably observed the droid and saw how he was doing it and then I was like oh I can do it better than that I can do it humanely and the animal just naturally responded to that yeah. It could, Probably. I mean, it could be the fourth. It could all lead back to the force. And like we there could be some that. revelation in a future episode that when we rewatch the show, we'll see breadcrumbs of her ability like everywhere. We're just missing yeah. that tiny little piece of context to make it clear to us, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did see the, you know, somebody using the force to kind of calm a, a wounded or angry animal down in this episode. So yeah. it's not too right. far fetched, I suppose. I just yeah, think yeah, her yeah. her like innate empathy. And just like kindness, I don't want to credit that to the force because you're right. Uh, kindness and empathy exist without the force. Uh, but I do think, you know, just the, the way that she's able to empathize with people is it, there's there is like a strong connection to just life uh, that she has that I think that's probably I mean, again, I loved seeing her train as a Jedi or supposedly trained to pass a test to be force sensitive. But I don't think we're ever going to see her use actual physical force i think it's all going to be kind of like those subtle like maybe reflexes or just kind of like you know empathetic you know what could be interesting calming techniques what every every emphasis we have of someone is being trained in the ways of the force it's to be a jedi and to fight um omega doesn't want to fight anyone she never has wanted to fight anyone she's always it's just kind of just been like she was like soldier trained to do so but i don't think that she ever wanted to fight anyone so i think that it'll be super interesting if they if, if she does eventually get to explore like being some some variation of force sensitive and she just learns like a more spiritual side of it and it's not necessarily used in a sense to be fighting people all the time because oh, every time yeah. we've seen like jedi what do you think of all oh, lightsabers you're gonna fight like that's what you think of like i think that it would be really interesting if they explore like the other side of the things of the for of the ways of the force because which is the true Jedi way. Those yeah, absolutely. Jedi. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of so idea I, of like Avatar Aang finding a nonviolent solution. You know, yeah. all the yeah. training is like violence focused, but there is another way and something else I, to explore. I, made, I, I have had in mind, I wonder guys. if the Lucasfilm is slowly retooling our textbook definition of what it means to be and qualify as a Jedi so yeah. that we can take all of these characters and put them together for Luke's Jedi Academy on Osis, have a show about that. And you can have mm. Sabine in there now. You know, you could have Omega in there if she chooses to be. They can cut using this M count definition. You can kind of make anybody you want part of that new Jedi graduating class. You know, mm. yeah. And and talk yeah. about the king of nonviolence. Uh, that's Luke. Luke wins yeah. the day when he chooses nonviolence twice. You know, in in Return of the Jedi and the Last Jedi. So Omega would be right at home in his in his academy if she ever wanted to train as a Jedi. <laughs> It's wild we're at this point because I know earlier this season on Mount Tantus, we were like, oh, her blood just works with the thing. Like she's not necessarily doesn't necessarily have a high M count herself. But then this <laughs> but episode just brings like, us all the way back like oh, Omega yeah, and Luke's Academy. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, they're having but, their um, cake and they're eating it, too, because we never actually get an answer as to whether or not her M count is high. We have True. we have like, you know, Asajj skirts around the topic, but we never actually get like a solid concrete like, yeah, she's super force sensitive. She has a high M count or whatever, um, although that you, is pretty much the implication. Do you think that Asajj like also had like the blood sample test like on her ship or was she just no. doing these like psychological <laughs> tests like uh, I think she was, the process? I think she was looking to see if if omega exhibited some kind of like force re reflex or force you i think know, she secretly pricked her building. with the little thing that qui-gon used in the phantom <laughs> menace and then he was she was just making her jump through hoops for the fun of it you're talking about like, the uh, women's razor yeah the little yeah. Gillette, women razor like calm the yeah the little gillette but she was just yeah. testing the blood for infections that yeah wasn't. yeah exactly. well course. she can use it for two things she can she can make sure that she can you know assess the m count and then she can also take the little plastic things and get 
three lines of dialogue from any character that she has the action figure for. She was like, Hell <laughs> yeah, dude. Yep. Hell yeah. Tech, tech, tech. Ready to go. Oh, tech. That's what it's called. I always, technology. Because it has Yoda on it. Look at him. There he is. You have the I other thing with it. you? I don't I have it. It's like in there. my closet, just like oh. off to the side. I don't have it like on me. <laughs> but I do have it. Batteries are op operating. It works. I have all the chips. By the I end of the episode, thing. we need it. No, no. Absolutely. What's the dense thing about that toy is that it comes with a belt clip? Yeah. yeah. You, can take it together. Well, you can like have it handy in case of emergency, you know, when you're out. In case out. anybody needs some Yoda lines real quick. quick they need to bust out your Watto, you know. Oh. <laughs> Next celebration, oh. we're at. You got to carry that thing around. You know, do yeah. the no. token lines just all the time. Um, I just got to carry all the chips in my pocket. This is how I choose to communicate from now on. Oh my <laughs> anyway, chips. so I, I absolutely adored the fight um, between yeah. the, the boys and Ventress. Like, that was very cool. That was, like, a really, really, like, well-done fight on all accounts. And they all got their asses handed to them. Dude, and then, well choreographed. The moves themselves yes. were cool. The situation really cool. was yeah. silliness. It was, yeah. why would the Bad Batch try? Like, it was clearly they wanted to show us her yellow lightsaber. And that's yeah, yeah definitely. Like, oh, it's absolutely. They and it's just so funny. read her file like five minutes ago. We talk like, about yeah, we them being it. dopes. They are dopes. <laughs> They're complete dopes. Huge dopes. So, Every time the Jedi Council had to tangle with Ventress, they sent multiple Jedi to deal with it. And they're like, I, I think I could beat her with my fists. And yeah, I think I could take her. One. It's, yeah. it's the henchman syndrome, you know, like five henchmen <laughs> fight Batman in an alley. Six <laughs> four of them out. Henchman number five's like, I'm going to be the one. I got this guy. Gonna I can't believe I'm going to take no Batman. 20 <laughs> years of my coworkers dying, but I'm going to knock him out. Let's go. Literally. It was very Batman. I, yeah. I mean, like we say that like every every oh, week yeah. that the that the Bad Batch are just a bunch of dopes because they they don't they don't <laughs> think they they really don't they just they just rush into the fight sometimes. Um, and, and like I love the little hard. like I I love the little detail earlier of like Crosser like rushing up with like the data pad saying, "Oh, I checked Tech's old files." Um, you're right, <laughs> it's her. <laughs> like, like, like I'm just the like, picture was so hard. funny. Yeah, it's just like it's I her. Know. Look, um, like Ventress, we found your Instagram. What's all this droid shit? And that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the moments she like looks back at them, just like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, I, it's perfect. Um, but yeah, the fight, uh, the fight was very good, and uh, they all lost. And Omega runs back in, like it's the gift from like community of like uh, Donald Glover re returning with the pizza and everything's yeah. on fire. fire. Like Omega's literally like, what is happening? What what are you doing? Put them down. Like I, it's, I, it's such I love a good little moment. Enters in the air, records on the ground, and Crosshair's just out. He's yeah. just out, like not Crosser, even participating anymore. Crosser has like, the worst like, stomachache, like known to man. Wrecker <laughs> is the one being like strangled, and Hunter is just like at like lightsaber point, just like. <laughs> there okay. is a scene in the fight that I absolutely love, and it's a split second. You see, you see it. It's it, Wrecker gets kicked and he falls down, and when he's down, he does like a little twitch, and it's so funny to me. He's like twitching <laughs> on the ground, like tweaking while the while his brothers are getting like the crap beat out of them. I and I and I like watched it last night again just to make sure I wasn't like crazy. But yeah, Crosshair. No, it's Crosshair. Wrecker, Wrecker because, like, is the okay. one who's like on the ground. He's like twitching. Mm -hmm. he's, like, oh, okay, okay, I love it. Slap, it open hand. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because Adventurous knows how how to properly fight people, especially hand to hand, like without any sort of like aid, and like she knows what to do. Hit, like, hit like all of like the points and whatnot, and like she knows everything for like especially for like someone bigger like Wrecker. She hits all of his pressure points. She goes for the back of the knees. She hits his good <laughs> eye, and then at the end, like she has to like use the force slightly to just shove him over completely and like nearly kill Hunter in the process because he gets barreled <laughs> over by Wrecker. <laughs> Force bowling. Just had to make that point at the end. She's like, okay, that's what hand to hand does. Here's one percent of my force powers. Exactly. Yeah. Over. Like, are we done? And, yet? and then they continued the fight. Like, like, uh, oh my God. They're done. Asked, They're somebody dumb. asked if um if it was mocap. And that was the first thing I thought as well. Because it was I like the best sure, but it choreographed looked, thing. There was something different about it, wasn't it? It did feel it a little bit more fluid. It reminded Kinda me like of that um wall Ahsoka fight in Mandalore. Yeah, Mandalore. yeah. It had a exactly. Quality to it. I haven't like seen direct news about that yet, but I would not be surprised if they did something similar. I feel like I saw a post that said um, the people who choreographed and staged this just like really like kung fu movies. And so it might just be like that sort of influence. But at the same time, it, it may have been mocap. I'm not sure. But it definitely showed that a lot of care was taken for the scene. Yeah. Completely. Really well done. When I, I was say... when I was reacting to the episode, Bendu thought that she was using force speed in the hand to hand. She, I like I said, it do looks. You, do you think up. she was using a force power, or is she just that fast? 
I think she's just that fast. I think she's that fast. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think she was giving them a fair shake. I think when she threw the guns away, she wasn't going to cheat. She was going to actually go toe to toe with them. So I don't think she used it, but it was flipping fast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the, um, the year of yellow. She does that little kata and gets uh, Hunter on the ground, like mm -hmm. just oh, like that was that was sick. mirroring every move, like every strike before. She, it, was, it was so satisfying. Oh. I've always loved watching Ventress fight because she's so graceful. Like she always. There's, there's a couple fighters that make it really look like a dance, but she's like top of the list mm. every time. Very very like flawless. It was a great re reintroduction to, to so, Ventress. I like how uh, the whole thing with the fight ends in which she just like pretty much ends it with um, saying we're all pawns in the same war and we all lost. Yeah, and oh, I thought yeah. that was really, really, really powerful and essentially just, like, leaves them with the thought of I'm, I'm not your enemy in this moment. And it's in that moment that Omega is just like, OK, well, we should try to trust them. And then the boys go and they have their chat. And none of them trust her. And to the point where even Crosshair is just like you. You're being naive, and I love how Omega immediately like dishes it back to Crosshair again of saying that, "Well, I trusted you, and you changed, so we're gonna hear this out." I just love it again that Crosshair is still trying to like, um, <laughs> I guess, go against Omega, but at the same time, just totally support her because <laughs> like he's trying, he's trying to look difficult. out for her, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he exactly. goes against her out of caution and out of like care. But again, yeah. the support is more important. Eventually, he'll side with her. Yeah. So um, hmm. let's talk about the sea monster, I guess, since uh, we haven't really gotten that far in the <laughs> I boat. I feel so and, bad for that boy. Yeah. That. yeah. Yeah, he's fine. So he like the coming out there, and then he gets jumped by a ship, and like it's like from his perspective, he's like that was an attempted mugging that he very narrowly escaped from. He's a just in his bit. home. Yeah. So I so this creature was called a a, a Vrathian. Okay. So right. there, of Raytheon. It Love was in it. the article breakdown today. But um, but yeah, I mentioned it earlier. He's like fresh off of eating like the pot of like squid like beforehand because it has like all like the green goo like dripping out of its like that was mouth. Such a cool effect. Also, I love that he had the pulsing like phosphorescence on that was yes. the exterior, yeah. like, like a deep sea creature would, where there's no sunlight. You know. Yeah. yeah. So Very uh, that. Cool. I thought that, that that reminded me a lot because like, you really noticed it at the end. That reminded me a lot of the way that the Pergil um, pulse before they make the jump to hyperspace. Yep. Um, and like, Ooh. obviously, like this guy isn't jumping to hyperspace in the ocean. But I thought hey, that was really cool that like when when it's at ease and it's calm, it'll just like pulse with like that light. That was very a very cool touch with just the lighting there. Mm. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like he he's eating home. the school of fish, then he finds a boat and he's like, Okay, let's don't mind if I do. Ventress starts like <laughs> fighting him off, and then suddenly he gets like someone's taking shots at him from a shuttle, and you even see a reaction <laughs> shot of the monster. He like throws his tentacles up and he's like, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? Like he's literally like, like you you called me. I yeah, you called me. Here. This is true. What what, is, what, 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 what did I do? Strike me? What is this? What is this? Mm. I said good day, sir. And then he just like back <laughs> 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 to the ocean. It was a setup. Reminds um, me a lot of the uh, the creature. Is it was it called Mebo? I think. Bebo. Yeah, in, from, uh, in from resistance. resistance. Bebo. Bebo. Oh yeah. Bebo, yeah. Nico yeah, has a friend, and, and then the mama creature. Similar, like semi crustacean, very low craft. Yeah. And very yeah. Colorful, that's like, right. Good call. Yeah, that's, that's what made me. Cut. I don't think it's the same species or anything like that, though. That thing was massive. No, it wasn't noted so. as such, so I, I don't think so, but. Ah, we can have like more random sea creatures. Why not? Yeah, um, I, like goat eyes. Eyes. I always like goat eyes. They're cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did yeah. Have eyes. I think that, that that was a very I love how the eyes were purple with like the black stripe through it because it was very similar to uh, Ventress's like shoulder pad with the oh, black snake. Totally. Um, and like, I don't know. I mean, it probably Did you tell was what that was? It looked like a cog, but it was like a I didn't really snake. recognize the symbol. Apparently it was a snake. Yeah. Oh, oh weird! I so, it's a snake. so a combination of looking at too many reference photos for friends already, and in the breakdown of um, the guide, the guide breakdown today, there's a lot of information about like the Ventress's like look and her new outfit, in which it's like a weird combination of the bounty hunter look that we see in the Clone Wars at the end, and then the new shoulder pad and just new stuff. And so it is like the little black snake, in which I believe in Dark Disciple, um, he kills the snake. I don't, I haven't, I, okay, look, I'm like fuzzy on the details. <laughs> There's something about a black snake, like in Dark Disciple, and, and please don't come after me with pitchforks, but I haven't finished reading it. Very similar. But the episode, the episode guide points out that she wears the snake in the Clone Wars. Like, that's a carryover yeah. from her outfit in Clone Wars. 
yeah. was the snake pauldron. Exactly. Um, but there's also something about a black snake. Misunderstood, about... like a snake. Yeah, is misunderstood. Sure. <laughs> is that what it says in the guide? That's what it says, That's in, the what guide, it says yeah. in the guide. Okay. That's it what it says in the guide. That she's like misunderstood. Yes. Yeah. Snakes they... are often misunderstood. So angsty. And because I... during the story, oh, okay. she sheds her skin. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's, and, that's also and true. grows hair. It grows hair. Uh, like hair a snake. Was... She oh, gets cute little, cute little bangs, just like a snake. Okay. Yep, 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 exactly. Speaking I like her I wet dug, hair. I look. dug the uh, the underwater mohawk <laughs> look, and then when she came yeah, back, it was, it was awesome. Back for yeah, second. yeah, like, I like that. Look. That's forget, a look right there. Forget wet hair hunter. I like wet hair <laughs> ventress, right, Jamie? Yeah, you get it now. You get it. Even <laughs> though I was deprived, now you get it. <laughs> no, I get it. I'm here. I got it. I got what but I anyway, want. Anyway, what um, what do you suppose the relationship between Fanic Shand and Asajj Ventress like? What does that look like, and how did that start? I'd say it's some sort of like informer network um, because like Fennec has like ears on the ground for like everything. And I think that also for Ventress, she also just has ears on the ground for absolutely everything and just like knows how to get like context and stuff. And like one of the first things she says to the Bad Batch is she like warns them that they shouldn't be asking around about things like M count because people will find out. Right. Um, so it's possible that like maybe she lists. even heard about it before Fennec even approached her um, that the group of them was like talking about it because she found it very easily. Found I them think they met in a bar fight. That's <laughs> I, I like that too. I like that's that too. very possible. One hundred. This might this might upset some people, but I think it would be great if they took this opportunity to co-opt part of the legend story and uh, the Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker dynamic, and gave it to Fennec mm. Shand and Asajj Ventress, and say that Fennec hired, tracked her down, fell in love with her, and now is helping keep her off the radar of the Empire. I'm living for that agenda. Yeah. I enjoy that. that. That's a good one. That's okay. it. That's the one. That's do we the think one. Quinlan is still That's out the there? One. Is there oh, a love yeah. triangle between Quinlan? I think, I think if anyone's going to be into Polly, it would be Quinlan. He's a pretty open-minded <laughs> dude. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty that. open -minded. Well, maybe Keanu Mundy. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. He's like, he was allowed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but it's not fun once it's allowed. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, he, he, like, he had eight wives, and you know that he was the kind of dude that like gets home from work and sits in his car in the driveway for like an extra five minutes before he goes into the house. His really yeah. tall car. Yeah, that's, yeah, the cone cone shaped fucking Geo Metro. Or oh, he just that's has a sunroof, and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's, he's, he's it, the out. sunroof is just constantly <laughs> open, and his the top of his Not head with little ponytails like flying yeah, around. He, just, oh he actually just uses a sunroof because it's too expensive to get the custom custom top. Yeah, so if it's, it's raining, raining and he's sitting there just like, oh. So he's gonna wear a raincoat like cone on top. Oh yeah. my god! He borrowed it from Dan Aykroyd. It's all good. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh. Okay, so the way where this like leaves off with is. <laughs> How did we get uh, there? I don't know, but I'm moving on. Um, she she warns them that well, first of all, we get the actual like ass hair interaction of like oh, Crosshair helping um, <laughs> Omega onto the ship and then helping Ventress onto the ship, which like that's huge. Like that's all I'm saying. That's, that's all. I will I'm say saying. she did hit him harder than she hit Hunter and Wrecker. In what fight. does that mean? It that's her love something. language. With more passion behind it, she knocked him <laughs> out. You know. That's anyway, her love language. Something animalistic about it. <laughs> Ass hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. Um, I can't help it, man. It's all good. No, Everywhere you, I go. It happens. You, I'm surprised we didn't get more derailed like, during this thing, actually. I, I, um, I do apologize. Time. I'm like an ADHD Kool-Aid man. It just happens when <laughs> I go on a podcast. It's pretty bad here. That's why we. Um, that's what we like. The way that <laughs> this do. ends with uh, Ventress warning that they're not as safe as they think they are on Pabu. I mean, if, he, if she can find them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they never explain how she found them. Um, she doesn't need to. She doesn't need to explain how she found well, them. You know also, how the heck did she? Theory. That hey, sea ahead. monster is gonna swim all the way to a hollow terminal. Be like, listen, guys, <laughs> woke me up and shot at me. I think you need to call the empire. You just see like the tentacle just like slap like a computer, just being like. Pfft. Yeah. That's the signal that goes out. Inevitably, a fleet's showing up, and we're getting a base delta zero, and Pabu is going to get leveled, and they're just going to cut to the corner of that monster, being like, "Those are the guys right over there." <laughs> yep, those, are the, those are the two. Those are the two officers. <laughs> this monster is the key to all of it. All of this. <laughs> What's this his is name? Again? The ver. The ver. He's a, a Vrathian. 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 Vernon. Vernon. The Vrathian. Vernon. <laughs> Vernon. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I I love how Ventress's little tale ended up with 
uh, but I've got a few lives left. And that was like yes, enough of saying. On. That was perfect. It was She's enough of. Acknowledging it. Good stuff. Um, I don't think we'll see her again in this season, but I think that we definitely will in the future, just based on the the episode alone, but also based on all of the content that's come out of the past day with li literally her voice actress like saying, yeah, there's going to be something casually so <laughs> yeah what what a what a great prediction so like, i don't know there might I, be I more feel like it's, i feel like it's like pretty obvious that like that sets yeah. up something for the future but with the state of the fandom they really have to like hold some hands and walk people through some to, some like easy I, some rudimentary thinking and be like this isn't a retcon let me let me pull this up again an explanation <laughs> we don't want to spoil anything but we want fans to know that the new ventures storytelling will align with the events of dark disciple from brad rao <laughs> I feel like that needs to be said again. Yeah. Um, just, just so we know. for everyone in the back. For everyone in the back who didn't get that, everybody get in this. Um, there's again the moment in Frozen Empire where they reference that line from the first movie. Everybody get in this. Anyway, I'm still on Ghostbusters. Obviously, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I think that, that that pretty much like sums up the episode at this point. So, from here, where do you think that we're gonna go from here? Bad. Things. Batch. Yep. Bad, bad, batch. Batch. bad batch. Bad batch. <laughs> bad, um, batch. bad batch. Gonna be in it. I um, think. I think the sunny, the sunny weather is gone in a big way. You know, that last episode was definitely. overcast for a reason because now it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be downhill. You know, we've got, we've got the repercussions, shall we say, to all the people that have helped the bad batch. We're gonna be seeing that happen pretty soon, and Pabu, I think, is next up on that list. Um, we also have to mount the clone rescue from tantus that that echo and and uh rex are working so hard towards i like this is, i don't know I, I i try hard not to be cynical and i try not to hard to just use deductive reasoning but like there's a shit ton of clones left in the show this is the mm. final season a couple years from now there's almost no clones that doesn't send a, like an optimistic message for how this thing's going to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, observation is not cynicism it's just observation <laughs> after yeah. rogue one we know that they're not afraid of going that way for an ending also you know I, yep. yeah not everybody gets plot armor in, in, in the finale when are we gonna see cody when are we I gonna think, see echo I think again deliberately making us forget about cody so he can come in clutch in the very last episode mm. they He's want us to forget all about him so he can show up like gandalf at the very end like the, the, the dude in, or gandalf the dude in um the dude uh, in the Lord of the Rings, Independence Day. Yeah, dude in Lord of the Rings with the beard. <laughs> or the or um, what's Hello, his face? Boys. Dude in Pineapple Express with the day Wulanza. Yeah. Yes, red. Yeah. red. <laughs> Cody, Cody. he's gonna come in and smash Cody. someone with the day Wu. He's like time. he's like nearly like dead and everything. I guess. Yeah. I'm the back. Neck, he has the neck brace on. <laughs> Cody. Oh, that's gonna go down. <laughs> oh, that's really top good. tier reference. I love that movie. <laughs> <It's> really good. <laughs> Underrated. Very. It really is. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Pabu is going to probably get leveled. It's going to be sad. Oh, um, also, I'm a, I'm a tech truther. I believe tech will be revealed in the next ooh. few episodes as I mean, a shadow really, operative, yeah. or at least as an antagonist of some sort that they're going to have to get through to oh. to kind of thing. So that's going to be Crosshair. It's going to be next... reversal because tech's the one that tried to convince Crosshair to come back and failed. Crosshair yeah. is going to convince tech to come back. Next week's episode, episodes, it's two episodes next week. It, I right. believe it, it's Identity Crisis, and I forget the name of the sec second one. Um, but we literally have an episode coming up that's called Identity Crisis. Oh, so No Way Back. Or not, uh, what's it called? What's I that? don't know. I, uh, I'm looking up the episode. What you, what are you talking okay, about? No, I think that's a red herring. I don't think that'll be about tech. I think that's going to be about Hunter trying to cut his bangs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to cut him wrong, and it's no, he, that's it. He's going to accidentally gonna... cut it into a different style. He's going to be like, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> he, he's going to take the headband off, actually, finally. And we are going to see that his head, head's, uh, forehead is actually. Oh, God. Like... It's in a smoking situation. He just has, like, going Whoa. straight up. And the tattoo um, cuts off, like, right here. Yeah, exactly. Right in the headband. What if he has a tattoo of the headband under the headband? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yes. And it's red. And it's literally, like, taking surprised. off the sunglasses to reveal more sunglasses under yeah. the <laughs> Yep, that's it. I would not be surprised. AJ, while you're looking that up, I'm actually going to do... Point of no return. Um, there you go. should have the most incredible tan line right there, honestly. Oh, my God. He probably God. does. It's he probably definitely bad. does. That's that's probably why he doesn't take it off. He's embarrassed. He's too embarrassed. I don't blame him. Yeah, he looks like crosshair for like three inches going across <laughs> the top. <laughs> um, tech, even. So we have yeah. Identity Crisis and Point of No Return um, next week, so... Let's Point see. of no return doesn't sound fun. No, 
not for anyone. No. <laughs> for me. Hmm. Okay, I Matt. I know. I don't know why you're enjoying pain, but okay. I um, enjoy like Star Wars pain. I don't. Know I almost wish I hadn't found out that um, uh, McPoyle from a from a Star Wars. He's unlocked. I know <laughs> because it's know. it's a real. It's really hard to divorce him from that Dude, role. Dude, same. It is. Every time I hear his voice, I'm like, oh my god, it's McPoyle. He is great, I, though. He's a great. I always Nala say, and he's like, "You will call Omega." I'm like, "Don't say you that." Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you will call I, her. <laughs> oh my god. Um, let, let, let's let's switch really quick. We'll do uh, uh, character of the week. Ooh, character so, of the week. This is just uh, we all go around and pick who our favorite character this week was. Uh, by the end of the season, uh, we'll try to do a compilation of what all of our picks have been, and someone will be character of the season. I don't know who. Um, John Kyle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, who was your favorite character this week? Who would you say character of the week is for you? Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of someone other than Ventress because that feels so low hanging fruit. But honestly, it was just so cool Ventress. to see her. I got to give it yeah. to Ventress. It was Definitely. so it was so fun. I feel so proud of her. I feel like I've seen a kid grow up. You know where mm. she's come to. I know from back in season one of the Clone Wars. It's yeah, like one of those things is of um. Too special. It's uh, she's just as beautiful as the day uh, we last saw you. I, I'm yeah. just <laughs> so happy to see her. Um, AJ, character of the week. Oh, me second throws me yeah, off. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, this guy kicked Vernon the sea monster. Yeah, <laughs> I knew Vernon you were going to Vra- Vrapian, Vra- <laughs> the Vrapian. <laughs> Vernon Vrapian. Do you think he knows Scuba Stev? I hope so. Yes, maybe, he, uh, or he will. He will at some point. Scuba Stev definitely knows him. If, oh, it's, yeah. if it's not the other. <laughs> yeah they met in a bar uh, fight. <laughs> i was gonna say they went to high school together oh that yeah <laughs> and then they oh got in a bar God. fight yeah <laughs> there was a bar in the high school yeah yep. of course as, as as there. Customs, you know? um matt mm. you know I'm, I'm i'm gonna have to give it to ventress as well uh she she was she was fantastic <laughs> Like if I you're said, giving it to Ventress, I'm changing my answer to Vernon because he needs more support. <laughs> hey, two two V two V characters, that's fine. There Vernon Ventress. What do we got? Anyone for me? Yeah. Well, um, uh, honorary character of the week is the fact that the new ship is called Ass Hair. Um, <laughs> but uh, actual pick, actual pick for character of the week is Omega uh, because she she's going through her journey right now, and we obviously don't know what. The result is going to be but she is the star of the show and she she really she did shine this episode and i'm really nervous for the future <laughs> at the mm. end of the day also honorary mentioned a uh, record for the literally the one noise that he made of when men just look at <laughs> look back at him for the binoculars that it was the laughing at it <laughs> and the twitch <laughs> and the good. twitch yeah this really was a record heavy episode yeah this was yeah the last two were. all about him all about him <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Cal, really quickly, how did you feel about the alligators last week? Ooh, crocodiles, actually. Crocodiles. crocodiles. I, I enjoyed it. I it was, it was all quite space Florida, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was. They were a pretty, pretty big deal. Loved when them. the trailer came out, Matt's number one thing he was fascinated on was the the crocodiles. I just wanted to see them. I loved, I loved Wrecker's no hesitation, just jumping in there <laughs> to help Hunter. Like that was, that was quite the bro move. You really felt oh, yeah. the relationship there. And man, any anytime Ming Na Wen shows up, you know you're gonna have a good time. Like you can't not have a good time with a Fennec, a Fennec interlude. And so absolutely. I was I was grinning the whole time. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice crocodile interlude. I'm really tickled by the fact that like she can't hide the, how much fun she's having being in Star Wars. Like even in a even in a serious scene, you can hear her smiling as she reads the takes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just gr- grinning the whole time. Um, I'm convinced that there are certain scenes in Book of Boba Fett where they made her put the helmet on because she couldn't stop <laughs> and hide her mouth. She loves Star Wars so much, and it and it shows. <laughs> so <laughs> she really kills that character. Like, is amazing as that character. I don't want to say kills the character. Um, <laughs> it sounds weird. Uh, well, but I see. Brought her back. This is the way. Exactly. This is the way. Brings up. Um, I saw this earlier too. That some people have seen some of the rest of the season except the finale, and that it's like very, very dark. Um, and Do some of the. Some of the Do craziest need... animated Star I'm Wars ready. we've seen, so I'm ready for it. I'm ready. But... I'm ready too. Um, Matt wants me in. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't. I don't. I can't say I'm ready. It scares me the thought of this show ending. Like. Each each week, um, the episodes do actually sneak up on me. Like I forget that it's like 
that Wednesday morning and whatnot for us, like when they like drop or it's like Tuesday at like 3 a.m. Anyway, anyway, I forget when I get up Wednesday morning to watch the show that it's actually like out and it's going to hurt when it's over, over. And I'm not looking forward to that at all. Mm. I, I, I made the decision a couple episodes ago to stop staying up late and watching it right when it comes out. I just get a good night's sleep and then watch it when I'm good and ready and rested. And it's really improved my yeah. watching experience. Agreed. So I highly recommend that. Anyone that's like feeling a little sleepy by the time the episode comes out, like, no. Watch it the next day. It's not worth it. You will miss things, you know? Yeah. Um, and as, as sad as I am for the end of this show, I'm very excited for whatever's coming next in Star yeah. Wars animation. Because you know Star Wars animation ain't going anywhere. It's exactly. That's what I was I was going to ask you. Do you think, where do you think they go next with animation? Other than like Tales of the Jedi and, and stuff like that. Do you think, do you think we see Obviously, a continuation yeah, of this story? Um, I think, I think we're going to jump across the, the trilogy again, and we're going to start bridging that gap between originals and sequels. And it's probably going to be focused around Luke's oh. Jedi Academy on Osis. That would be my guess. I Don't would love that. that. That would oh. be. That's it. And, and and to respond to Ice's comment from like ages ago, I don't think that it's a guarantee that if they go to Luke's Academy, they get murdered by Kylo. They were there, There's no, no way in that. hell no, no, that's no. how Grogu goes out of this. Yeah, story, right? right. No, no, no. Not going to happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen there's gonna be plenty of other explanations mm. yeah yeah i, I hope i, I, I hope agree. you're right <laughs> i'd love to see that if it happens i will eat a gonk droid all right Ooh. That, Ooh. you will eat gonky You're, you will eat your gonky droid i mean that'd be sad fuck it yeah this, this is pretty <laughs> big but <laughs> i use some trick photography and i'll eat a really small one instead yeah <laughs> make it look big. there we go well, don't admit well, I, it on air. <laughs> I don't want to force that upon you. So um, I hope that just the shows happen and we enjoy. <laughs> anyway, um, it'll never happen. They're never going to kill off Grogu at no. the hands of Kylo Ren. That's no not way. a scenario no. that I have to worry about. A cute a little merchandisable about. character that lives for thousands of years. They're not going to waste that opportunity. And that is played by a puppet so they can. They don't even need to keep casting an actor. Like Exactly. It's the only reason they were able to preserve like what is possibly one of the greatest reveals in television history, Grogu in that first episode. Yeah. If they'd cast a person to play Grogu, it would have got out. There would have been a call sheet. There would have been a casting thing. There would have been a makeup fitting. No, All these things rough. with so many people involved. Like, there's no way it would have been contained. But because it's a goddamn puppet and they can literally put their star actor in a suitcase when they're not like <laughs> filming, there's no way that that could leak. Now I'm so, like picturing a human cast Grogu, just like a little guy right. walking around painted green. We're getting <laughs> way <laughs> off, Grogu. way <laughs> off. And I did not want to dive into the Grogu conversation tonight, but somehow we dove we into got there. it. Um, I don't want to be there. So let's get out of there. <laughs> um, thank <laughs> you so much for joining us tonight, Kyle. Kyle. Um, we had an absolute blast having you on. Thank you for dealing with me tonight. Uh, you're good. Thank we you love that at all. It was great. Really. Chaos. Uh, where this can is, people yeah. find you on social media, on your accounts, and what are you working on? Uh, you can find me on YouTube as Kyle Katarn. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, or the other thing that it's called now. Um, I'm also on uh, Blue Sky and Threads, which are still in their infancy, but you can find me there too. Um, my handle's pretty much the same everywhere. It's Kyle Katarn except for on Twitter, where the L is a numeral one. Because some smart act like out there got the name before I did. So what are you going to do? Um, I do reactions and reviews to all things Star Wars related, whether that is official episodes coming out on Disney+, Plus, official comic books coming out every Wednesday. I'll do dramatic readings of those on the channel. And I'll react to fan films every single Monday. I've been watching Star Wars fan films for a couple of years now, actually. I've seen hundreds of fan films. And uh, I'm trying to react to every single one ever made. So... If you have one for me, throw me a link. I've got a Discord server. Um, I can provide a link to that in the description of this, too. Um, and, yeah, help me on my quest to review and react to every single Star Wars fan film. That's kind of the main basis of the channel right now. Yeah, we I will. like it. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you again for joining us. And so I've been Jamie with Matt and AJ. Uh, we've been the Holland Up Marauders. Uh, you can find us everywhere on social media at Holland Up Marauders. Um, this was a Bad Batch recap for Season 3, Episode 9, The Harbinger. We'll be back next week with another special guest for uh, more Bad Batch discussions. And so we'll see you guys next week on the Holland Up Marauders podcast. Thank you, everyone.